Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Today, we're talking Mike Declaration, Mike Points, R55, Mike's 52, Mike's 54, all that stuff. What the heck are they doing? Why do they have to do it every play? Why do some quarterbacks do it? Why do some centers do it? What's the difference? What's a redeclaration? All those things we're diving into, getting into the nuance, the details today should be a great one. I'm excited. Welcome to the QB School. Boom! All right, question from Kiplin. Great series. Why is it that the QB will point out the mic, not microphone, mic linebacker before each play? What is the purpose of that? Really important question, Kiplin. I appreciate it. Uh, it's a number of different things. So the first thing is that it usually sets the protection or the run blocking. So that's the first thing. It's an element of communication. So I remember not every team does the quarterback kind of Mike declaration where you hear him go, Mike's 55, Mike's 50, anything like that. Sometimes some teams, it's a center, some systems, it's going to be someone else on the offensive line. If the center is a, maybe a backup or a new player. And so it's usually one person It's most often, I would say the quarterback or the center it doesn't have to be though. There are no rules per se to say that it must be that person. But the essence of it is, is it tells everyone all the blocking assignments are off who the mic is. So depending on what the defense is, whether it's an even front, an odd front, or a bare front, and just real quickly refresher on that, an even front is usually four defensive linemen, an odd front is usually three defensive linemen in the pro game, and a bare front is when the guard, the two guards, and center are covered up with defensive linemen. So those are the really the three main different iterations. There's obviously a bunch of other hybrid ones that you see kind of all all the time in sub packages or goal line situations. But those are the three core base ones that you want to kind of learn to identify really quickly. And what you do from there is whether it's a run play or a pass play, who the mic is then tells people who they have to block, whether it's the next linebacker over, the next DB over, kind of, and it's all based off that spacing. So it's kind of like the mic is in the center. Well, then you either have the mic responsibility or you have the next linebacker to that side or the next linebacker to the backside. And so it's similar to that in the run game and the pass game. And so it depends on where that mic is, is tells you if you're the running back and you have the weak linebacker. So let's just say normally called the will. So if they come up and point Mike 52 and he's the middle of three, then you have the next one to the left. Well, if he's, if they come up and point the, for whatever reason, they think that they're going to get a blitz over here and they go, Mike, 55 to the right of the middle of the three. So the right one, well, then now you have the one left, just left to it. So it changes the, that is kind of a redeclaration. So this idea that it's not always the middle of the three is the mic. It's who they want that particular play to be the mic. And it gets really complicated in short yardage situations. So you'll often see, you know, a, a quarterback point out someone who doesn't look like they're the middle of the three linebackers. And they'll be, they'll say like, Mike 44. Well, that just changes the blocking assignments, the blocking responsibilities for that run play. Now, does every quarterback have the capacity to do that? No. Does every system require you to do it? No, either. But many professional teams do require the quarterback to do it. I remember the first time, first couple of years in the league, in the West Coast system, there really wasn't a whole lot of mic declaration. You didn't have the quarterback doing it. The offensive line took care of the majority of it. And it wasn't a real blatant, like, you know, Mike 51. It was the center makes the pass pro calls. The quarterback knows where they're going, knows where you're hot, and you roll the dice and you go from there. Then I went to a few different teams, ran digit personnel or different digit offenses or different types of variations of that offense. And so then it was all of a sudden, you got to make a mic declaration. And I was, I remember being like really nervous. Like, you know, I, this is another thing I have to worry about at the line of scrimmage. And eventually it's really, it's really, really simple. You essentially point out the middle of the three linebackers, every single play it gets a little bit more confusing in sub personnel. And what I mean by sub personnel is nickel and dime defenses. And all that means is how many DBs are on the field. So you usually take out a linebacker or defensive lineman, but usually a linebacker and replace them with a DB type player. And that's the nickel player. There's a famous story of Brett Favre pretending like he didn't know what nickel defense was for a number of years in the league. I'm not sure if I ever believed that story, but that's basically the essence of it. Nickel, five, five DBs, dime, 10, uh, six DBs, quarter, seven, seven DBs. But really that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't matter who's in the spots. It's the middle of the three linebacker type positions. So let me bring up a couple diagrams just to be able to show you exactly what I'm talking about. 
So this is a real simple 4-3 base defense. I'm not going to go over every single position, but this is 11 personnel on offense, meaning one running back, one tight end, and this is just a base defense. And so the defensively, it's really easy because they identify it here as the mic. But the way that you could identify it, if these were just numbers here, if these were just numbers, you want the middle of the three linebacker types. So whoever is right here, it doesn't mean that it's always going to be the Mike linebacker, if that makes sense. They could line up a nickel right here, and they could line up a new linebacker you've never seen before. Over there, it could be a DB type. It could be quarters. They could line up a, their true Mike that normally lines up in the middle over here. Well, this is the Mike. He's the middle of the three linebacker types. And I think that's the thing to pay most attention to. You'll be able to see it pretty simply, especially when you're playing clean kind of base defenses like this. It's the middle of the three is the Mike linebacker most often. But let's just say, now we're going to go hypothetical here. Don't, don't, don't lose me here. Let's pretend that this linebacker was walking right here and this linebacker was walking right up here. And we had a six-man slide protection. So we got these six, five offensive linemen and the back in the pass pro. And the back's coming to this side. Well, normally in most six-man slide protections, they would be sliding out to this will right here. So you have these two guys walked up in the line of scrimmage here. Well, now we got issues because if they bring two, because we got the back going on a duel, one to two, if both of them come, we're going to be hot. But we don't have to be hot because they're only bringing six, right? They're bringing these four defensive linemen and these two linebackers. So instead of being here, instead of making this the mic, Let's go ahead and make this the mic with a redirect. We'll cross off this. Now this is the will. So now the line is sliding here. So just to clean it up, normally it's the middle of the three. But now we say, oh, they're going to hit us with a strong dog. They're bringing two over here. Well, let's change the declaration. So now the mic is over here. This now becomes the will. And now this line is sliding here. And we pick this up easy. Now you just need to communicate it with six different players, really seven defensive players, because now you don't want the tight end running any sort of hot route. You want them staying in their route. So that's kind of the essence of it. And then let's just go hypothetical here, redirect the other way, six man slide protection. So again, these guys sliding out, identifying this is the mic, their slide, the offensive line is sliding to the will and the back is doing a duel one to two. Okay, well now they're gonna hit us with some sort of crazy four week here. So normally, if both these guys, if the one and the two didn't come for the back, you could rely on this back scanning back to hit this. But let's pretend that this Sam is threatening to come right here. So we got this Sam walked up in here. He might be coming, but we know we're getting hit with a will free safety. They're playing some crazy over the top coverage on the back end. Who knows what they're playing? Doesn't matter. Just hypothetical here. So the lines go into the will. The back has to step up over here to take advantage of this. And now you're going to be over here. You're going to have to throw side adjust, backside of the pressure, whatever it is. What you could do is get a redirect and make the will, the mic. Then that would put the line back over here on the free safety. The free safety then becomes the will. And now your back is going one to two to three. Now you still might be hot if they end up bringing the Sam, but at least you'll be blocked up on one side. So that's kind of what a redirect gets you in the pass game. Now let's talk 3-4 mic declaration. So this is a little bit different than I'm used to identifying it. But again, a 3-4 real quick, just three defensive linemen, nose, two defensive ends usually. Usually I'm used to referring to this as the Sam to the strong side, the Mike. This is usually the will to me. And then this has been called a bunch of different things. I'm most used to calling it the plug, but it's I've seen it called a number of different things. Either way, these are four linebacker types. One two, three, four, and a three, four. Three defensive linemen, four linebacker types. So this changes a little bit. Most often, it's the still, the mic is the mic is the mic. And it's usually the strong side inside linebacker. So strong side, tight end usually identified in most offenses. Whatever the inside linebacker to that side in a three, four is going to be the mic declaration. So you would come up and go, Whatever, Mike, let's just pretend it's 52. Mike, 52. Let's pretend the will is 54 here. Well, now let's say that we do a tray, we do a shift for the tight end. So the tight end comes over and then he lines up over here. He steps off. Now we're in a three by one. Well, they don't change their front. So do we need to make a Mike declaration change? Probably. So then we would go Mike, 54. When really it originally was the will and it might be their will defense defender. But for our purposes, 
Now with the front, with the tight end over here, this now becomes the mic. And so we would give a mic, whatever I said it was, 54. So again, it's one, two, that in, first inside linebacker in a three, four is usually defined as the mic. So pretty simple, a little bit different in the three, four, changes a little bit things pass pro wise, but not really, it's, it's still seven guys, don't overthink it. But again, that's just the, how you go about identifying who the mic is. So now let's do some mic declaration examples here. I got a handful of them, think four-ish, maybe one or two little more difficult ones, but normally you're gonna see that they're really simple to identify. And all we're gonna try to do is identify the middle of the three. And sometimes you don't even need to know who's who in the zoo exactly. And what I mean by that is it doesn't matter if they're a defensive lineman, a mic, uh, or a linebacker, a DB type. It's the middle of the three linebacker positions. So you have to know what those are. You have to understand the spacing and the levels of the, de of the defense. But at the end of the day, you want as a quarterback, you want to communicate. You want to be really explicit. Know who the mic is. Make sure the protection unit and the run blocking unit knows who the mic is. Make sure the back knows who the mic is. Make sure the tight ends know who the mic is so you know where you're hot. If you have sight adjust issues, you go from there. But really, it's an exercise in communication and then knowing your role and responsibility. And so it gets a little muddy when people are walking around and you got to make changes. But clean, most pitcher looks on non-third down kind of exotic situations are going to be really simple to identify. So let's dive in for a couple examples. So first one up here is the Texans. We're on the right hash. Okay, so let's assume that there's three out here. So a, a nickel type guy out here. Let's see if I can get the right color. A nickel type guy out here. Three by one. So one. Here's the middle of them. Mike, whatever this guy's number is, easy call, right? Simple. Let's, um, let's pretend now that this free safety walks down. He might be coming. What do we do? We redirect. Mike now is here. This becomes the will and just pass protection wise, even though it's the free safety, even though it's a DB, that's why you control the numbers because it tells you offensive line where to go and who's who in the zoo. Next example, Bengals. A little bit different here. Looks like we got a two by two. They're on the right hash. This is a wide angle, so it's a little bit more difficult, but it's more fun because you can see the shell. So we got middle field closed. Looks like the safety down here. So we got three linebacker types right here. Easy to see, middle of the three, boom, Mike. Mike, whatever that guy's number is, we're good to go. Again, potential redirect with this rotation. If for some reason we thought we were gonna get hit with a strong dog, weak dog, whatever you wanna call it here, Two to a side, you could change the declaration, make this guy the mic. Really simple right here, you might be nervous. Oh, I might get a corner cat up top. Well, we could change right here, make this the mic. We know we'd have to be hot and have sight adjust all over here. Probably a good idea for that would be this safety moving over this way. But again, just little indicators, third and two, you're not gonna get any sort of craziness like that. You're gonna get middle field closed, man, and let's roll. All right, a little college game here, North Carolina, Georgia Tech, really simple now. Now, college, you're starting to get a little bit more clean looks, again, from the sideline. Should be really easy to identify for people watching. Middle of the three, boom, Mike, that guy. Don't know what his number is, doesn't matter. Now, these guys are cheating up here a little bit. Don't know what the down and distance is right off the bat. What is it? Second and goal, second and goal from the 22 is not good. Either way, cheating up, I'd be thinking zero here a little bit when any time these guys are within eight yards, safety-wise. It doesn't matter. Really easy, easy to identify the middle of the three. You got to make a mic call. There it is. There's no definite pressure situations out here. Just everybody tight, be high alert for some sort of pressure. But as far as the mic declaration, really simple to ID. We should be watching TV, watching Madden, knowing exactly who the mic is now all the time. Now let's get into a little bit harder one. All right, now a little harder. We got the Jets here against the Seahawks. We got the Jets in what I'm going to call a bear. We got core covered. Okay. So what I mean by that is guard covered, guard covered, center covered. We're in a bear front. Usually bear creates a kind of different pass pro elements. But let's just say, because we don't know who's who in the zoo here. I can't tell you what this personnel is. We got bear front here. But this looks like a defensive end. And this looks like a linebacker. So if I'm just in mini camp one first day, this looks like a, basically a bear under. What I mean by that is we got the tight end right here. We got this over here. We're going to identify this side as the strength without knowing what's going on here. Probably the wide side. There's probably a two by two wide receiver out here, a little slot wide receiver. But again, just to identify it, we got the core covered. Boom. We got what I'm going to say is the Sam, Mike 52, Will 58. There we go. Let's roll. 
Usually when you get a bear, you'll get a bear check. And once you get a bear check, most offensive lines, even in run and pass, will have specific bear rules, depending on what you're going to do pass pro wise, where you want to run the ball, what checks you want to get into. But as far as IDing it, you don't have to be a genius, right? Like this guy looks like a linebacker DB type, linebacker DB type, linebacker type. These four look like de defensive linemen. We're good to go. Let's roll. We're still able to identify the middle of the three, even though this is kind of a jacked up hybrid look, right? You don't see a whole lot of bear anymore, depending on what the down and distance is or who, the, who you're playing. But again, really easy to identify the middle of the three. Mike 52 sets the pass pro, sets the run protection, sets the run blocking, and we're good to go. Let's roll. Play the play. Mike declarations, really easy to get once you understand. Middle of the three, make a call, live with it. Doesn't matter if they're walking around. As long as you know what your rules are, you should be able to identify the middle of the three 95% of the time really easily. If for some reason they have some sort of hybrid, walk around, amoeba, craziness, punt rush, it doesn't matter. You make a decision, Mike so-and-so, and we roll, roll the dice and we're on to the next.